Hey, Maximum Thrust, this is Rock, doing a VOD review. Uh, this one here is from your latest NGS series match um, versus Phoenix, Phoenix Rising Amethyst, PRA. Um, and you guys are playing, it looks to be Volskaya Foundry, Game 3, dun-dun-dun! No, um, so, one of the things I do for my VOD reviews is I tend to really review and focus in on um, specifically, what are our team's win conditions is, what is the enemy team's win condition, and what exactly um, can we do to ensure that we are playing and executing that correctly. So I'll kind of just follow around the tank's POV for the moment, um, just to try and uh, have uh, some things playing in the background as I discuss and go over stuff. So I actually really like that attempt there, that you're already using your traps and stuff to try and make sure you isolate picks. Having both Malfurion and Junkrat means there's lots of opportunities to get cheeky traps. So, um, when I look at your team's win condition, you guys definitely scream, um, like, poke to all in. The reason I say that is that Stitches tends to be um, a pick tank. And so, um, but, like, obviously, it's sometimes it can feel like feast or famine. Either you get the hick, or sorry, you get the hook, or you don't. And, you know, it's like if we get the hook, we get a gorge, we get a kill, and then we can fight things 4v5. Or, you know, it's like we... Uh, miss the hook, and then our team can't do anything. And so, your damage structure is very, very pokey. Um, if you look at what Junkrat wants to do, Junkrat wants to um, chunk things down and then maybe use Rip Tire to all in and get a kill. And then Chromie is predominantly going to be doing the same thing, right? Poking from range and using effectively both of them. They're very far range to be able to get kills. If you didn't have stitches, oh boy, you might be a little overextended here. Um, should be okay. So, um, but like if you didn't have stitches, and let's say you had um, Joanna or Garrosh or something like that, I would have thought for sure you guys were playing a poke comp instead of a pick comp, just because your two DPS have such a strong artillery that they can never be engaged on. They just always are back. And so, like you've got tons of vision control with traps and. Crummy, um, crummy traps, time loops, all that stuff. So, um, yeah. I said I don't really like that hook there. Like, I know it didn't, you didn't do much to you, it didn't hurt you much, but, like, it just in general didn't add much to your, to your team. Like, if you want to wave clear, that's fine, but there's no DPS, so the hook effectively won't do anything. And so this is danger here. Yeah, I think you just ratted your own team out. Okay, let's back up real quick. So, we'll still talk win conditions in a second, but I just wanted to... Uh, Kind of focus on both of these. So right here, can you land a hook? Yes. Can you get a kill? Probably not. Even if you got the hook and somehow Diablo like sat in front of your towers, you probably won't kill him. And so the question becomes, is it worth throwing the hook? Right? Because like, Diablo has now turned the tides, and what you were doing to just kind of poke is going to chunk out your health and your positioning. Like, we don't see the rest of their team, but if somehow, you know, they had follow-up CC and all that stuff, this has resulted in you dying because you tried to get a hook for pressure. You know, it's like we ended up, you know, it, it not the end of the world, right? We only lost a couple hundred health, and then we ended up just getting it all back by popping our E. Our E will be back up soon, you know, 15 seconds. But that 15 seconds means the E's not going to be up for this next fight, which, again, do we want to fight? Right? So, like, we've started the healing camp. So if the call is, get the healing camp, you should be fighting the healing camp. Right? I know you don't add a lot of damage to it, but the main job of the tank is to predominantly ward and engage. You also have damage absorb. Um, but, so, it's like, so right now, do you need to engage? No. You've got all the control in the world. The bomb could be placed a little bit more to the middle, just so that way... If they do stand on the point, you 100% guarantee to blow them off the point. So that way they can't uh, take the healing trap from you once you kill the thing. But instead of taking our zone control and all of the wonderful things that we've set up, we go for a hook. Which, don't get me wrong, we do want to get kills. We do want to pick things, right? Like, you pick Stitches, you pick Malfurion, you're trying to get kills. But should you be looking for a pick right now? Because all of your DPS and everyone that you have is currently on the objective. Right? So, now that we've successfully pulled Diablo, which obviously you weren't aiming for Diablo, we've now pulled Diablo into our team, right? You've now 
told on yourself, maybe they knew ahead of time that you were on this, but you now have told on your team, hey, we're doing this, and our positioning, we are not able to follow up on the hook immediately. Right? Malf can run over to you to try and get help. Obviously, Chromie's putting a time trap down now to try and help CC lock him down. And Junkrat's already got his stuff then. He can't move his bomb. Because if Junkrat moves the bomb, then you can't control the point. And then your trap's chasing the, Z the Zuljin. So let's see what happens. So, again, you get flipped. Malf's root is pretty much as close as you're going to get. Right? It could have been a little bit more to the right. So that way it actually gets the CC immediately. But, you know, it's kind of a lot. And so now... Um, what was potentially advantageous and unknown doing this camp has turned in a full 5v5. And our DPS can't really burst through something, right? We kind of want to poke them away from the objective, poke them away from the point. And we're not going to be able to do that here. So they get a clear engage onto our backline. Uh, well, I should say backline. It hit our bruiser, right? And so now as we're sitting here fighting... We have blown up our bomb, right? So now we don't have the point control for the point if we actually want to fight for the point. And we're running away with two of our heroes, half health, popping all their defensives, right? So what was potentially a sneaky healing camp has turned into, hey, we gave them a healing camp at three-quarter health already missing. So... I don't have a problem if you want to try for that healing camp, but you need to make sure that we're on the same page. Because if we're looking for a pick, we should be setting our stuff up and using it as a pick, not putting all of our stuff down and zoning to take the take the healing camp and then forcing a fight on top of the healing camp when we were prepared to push them away from the healing camp. Right? Because now we can't really re-engage. Nope, the bomb ends up blowing them up. So they secure the healing camp, and our DPS really can't kill Blaze. Oh, man, and Chromie ends up dying in the background on accident through collateral damage. So, yeah. It feels like a very greedy fight to take. And then, you know, if we had a little bit more time, we could look at and see, did we know they were going to have five? How, what did our rotation show? Gazlo obviously was already at the point. We could look at vision control to see if they saw the Gazlo turrets or the Junkrat mine or the trap or whatever to see if they knew that you were there. But either way, we need to work together. Don't try and do both. So, with that in mind, we'll kind of follow along. So, they are up on toys now for the point. So, the first objective tends to not be super strong on this on this too. And so, that's something that you might want to look at and consider when you're playing for these different styles. So, okay. So, we landed a hook. I think I just saw the Malfruit. So, we're not going to... We have Malfruit ready. Uh, so... Our, maybe we didn't call our hook there. Because the Malfruit is a little late. Right? Like, if you're calling your hook, hey, I'm looking for a hook, the Malfruit needs to be almost right on top of the landing point. Like, right on top of the destination. It, it's going to feel like a waste sometimes. Because he's going to call hook, and then it misses. But, like, Unless there's a junk rat trap or something else that guarantees the stun, like we pretty much need the immediate root. And so the root isn't there. So our hook missed, and then they counter engage on us, and we probably lose two. Just one. Nope, two. So again, like it's it's little things here, is what it's looking like to me. Cause like if we're looking for the hook and we call in the comms, hey hooking. The Malfruit needs to be right on top of it. Could you get a kill if you did hook something? I, I honestly believe you can. Like, you would need a hook into, like, a mine boop, into tower damage, into displacement, right? Like, Stitches is a pick tank. And if you're going to play for these early hooks before you have your burst, you're just not going to be able to kill things. Like, you, you, the way, like, hero picks, when you play a pick comp, there's three things that enable, you know, if your pick is successful. You have duration of time CC'd, right? You can make a pick happen with very low damage if the person you're hitting is standing still for 10 seconds, right? Like, it sounds silly, but if you take a new Barak, Kelth, K, KT, so Kelthos, and Anduin, 
you have four stun root things that exist. Is that person going to be able to move? No. Are they going to be able to push buttons? No. That person's probably dead without help if you land all four buttons on them, right? That's two stuns, a root, and a third stun from KT. Even if KT didn't have his Q up, you guys standing there auto-attacking the crap out of him will probably kill, you know, a Brightwing, a Tassadar, a Zul'jin, right? So one of the layers of a pick can be CC. One of the, the other layer can be damage, right? There's a very famous composition that got, that got ran around to kill Diablo that actually used Karazim. So they would, like, vary and taunt and then Karazim seven-sided strike on top of Diablo and then mind control with Sylvanas, right? And so that Diablo effectively couldn't push buttons during the entire duration of the taunt plus mind control and is sitting there getting hit for percentage health damage every second by by the Karazim hits, right? Their CC comparatively to the last one is low, but their damage is high. So when you play for pick, you need to have the burst damage to go for the pick, or you need to have, you know, effectively infinite layers of CC to make up for maybe your moderate damage. But in general, every Stitch's hook needs to have follow-up CC and burst damage. And and this might, and we'll see how much that contributes throughout the rest of the game, but definitely that's something I'm seeing on these hooks, is we're just so far slightly not in sync, and then, like, you know, obviously we're not trying to hook Diablo, but, like, even if we don't hook Diablo, could we actually kill it? So, okay, so as they get the objective here, we're just going to take camps and stuff. So I'll keep going back to win conditions. So if we look at the blue team, the blue team, their main win condition is what I would consider to be all in to pick. So what I mean by that is that um, they want to fight when they either have APOC, I'd say it's like, or they want to wall bang off the Tassadar. I haven't seen them do it yet, but Tassadar plus Diablo can is pretty cheeky because they can create their own terrain and make sure that that happens. So, you know, they, they definitely want to... Uh, take those fights when it makes sense. They also have a Zul'jin, so they're going to be trying to potentially be scaling, right? So if they can get to the late game, Zul'jin obviously can do a lot of damage and can come a pain. So they have a little bit of scaling, a little bit of team fighting, but overall, you know, they're mainly looking to engage once they have their APOC online. So, see, that was pretty cheeky. I like that, right? Like, let's back up real quick. You guys land it right that, that we're not really in sync as far as our engage but we were able to you know it's like land what i thought was kind of the combo plan idea right okay so diablo's clearly a little far forward neon lands a well placed root right like you just raw hit a diablo running away in a sleepy root that gives enough time for a vacuity which just slightly off Right, like there's not a lot you can do because of the angle of when the root hit versus the sleepy versus the timing, right? But like if you could move up a little bit further here, then your bomb could potentially put him into the other side of your wall versus the bomb here ends up hitting him just right of the wall. So the other thing we could be doing if we're using sleepy roots first is being able to communicate that, hey, I've got hook, I'll hook him when he's asleep, but there was a bunch of minions in the way, so it's kind of hard to do. So I, like, I see the potential that you guys have for landing these things, but it's being sure to use them in the right order or use them together. And then the hook here hit a minion. We were just trying to force and punish them from chasing. It's a good loop. So we did play loop for pick. Okay, so we need to use our stuff in, in tangent. I think I saw that the trap got eaten by somebody else, but let's try again. Okay. So, W Star calls, right? So we just missed our target, right? We were looking for that Zul'jin who's overextended, and we got the minion. That happens. Okay, the trap's placed. Okay, so it didn't get lined up directly with the loop. But W Star here has either clearly, like, I, I in the same way that Aces should be calling for hooks, I want you to be calling your loops. If you know you're looking to loop before you hit the button loop, you should be saying, "I'm looking for loop. I'm looking for loop, or I want to loop this target." Right? Because they don't have a true cleanse. 
right wing can't cleanse loop. So if you know you're looking for loop, then we should be holding our buttons for loop. Right? Whether it be hook, or whether it be root, whether it be trap, whether it be bomb, we should be holding our buttons for loop. Because we throw a loop here, and don't get me wrong, Chromie's damage is on point. He's back to full health because, you know, Brightwing did the Z. But our Sleepy Root's back here. Not on the point. Not on the person being looped. The trap, as much as we want it to be useful, right? I think got eaten by got eaten by a minion or got eaten by the Diablo, so didn't actually hit the target. And then we didn't have any of our Junkrat other abilities available to help secure that kill. So, it's like, did we have a potential for a pick? Sure. So... You know, it's already kind of dangerous in general to be fighting for 10 versus 9s, but, you know, if you can get a pick, go for it, right? It doesn't matter if they're 10 versus 9s. If you've got that person displaced for 30 yards, he can't do anything. So, all right, let's see how you handle this. So we're still behind on 10s. We're getting camps. Next objective is going to be spawning top. So how do we want to proceed? 10s will be huge for us because we're going to finally have Gorge. We're going to have a Bomb. We're going to have either Sleepy or uh, the Song of My People. And we're going to have Black Hole. That's a good idea. Right? Like, you guys were looking for a kill. Clearing up waves. we got to answer top. We're looking for Blaze again bottom. This might be just ambitious. Oh, okay. So the loop was there. So if you guys are calling the loop, I'm good with that. But look again. Where did we put our stuff? Like, we need to have faith in our abilities here. If we're calling loop... Right? We can't miss. We know exactly where he's going to be returning. So we can put the sleepy root there. We can put the bomb there. We can put the trap there. We can then have Stitches come and gorge it or whatever. Right? Oh, wow. He actually blew Bunker. You guys just traded Loop for Bunker. That's a win. You're already happy. You guys should be leaving. And then Gazzle needs to be communicating what's happening top. Because he's getting, as I say, I'm like, he, I see four heroes on the top. So they responded, right? You see what happened there? They responded to your rotation by pushing top themselves. Right? We cleared mid. They already were on the top side. But as soon as they saw you bottom, right? They knew that they could engage top. Right? Gazzle's maybe, yep. I said, as soon as you pushed bottom, they engaged top. Right, that's kind of the idea of you want to be minimizing, maximizing your economy on the battlefield. If you know that your teammates, if they're showing four bottom, and it's going to take them an eon to run, rotate up to you, go do something on your side of the map. Right, we missed our pick, so now they're going to engage on us top. Um, poor Gazlo might be able to... Oh, the task wall. Okay, yeah, you're just dead. Yep, drop your things. Hopefully you just do what you can. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So then, when he's dead, you guys probably said, okay, we just trade then, because we can't go defend them. So we're sieging to try and siege. Obviously, Blaze's anti-siege is a little bit better. That's a great hook on the right wing. Did we not have our buttons there? So we're short Malfruit by a couple seconds. We're short. We just use the bomb. Right? And we're short loop. So, like, as much as we want to look for some of this stuff, right? Like, we just need to be communicating and looking. Because, yes, this trap can help us, but we're going to need that follow-up route from Malf, or we're going to need the boop. Like, we didn't take the uh, boop CDR talent, which I don't think you need in this particular matchup. But since we don't have it, there's no way boop's going to be up again. So, as much as we get this hook here, we might not be able to do anything with it. Right? So, like, we land the hook. And, yeah. Right? We're all inning on this hook attempt. And and we just don't have the, the follow-up to make it work. Like, we're try I see what we're doing. We're trying to push for an advantage on this side of the map because they took our top. But, like, we just need to be a little bit more in sync as well as our damage structure potentially needs to be changed if we're going to play Stitches. So, and then that bomb just didn't go off in time. The towers are e-mean. We're playing the song of our people, so we're all going to live and get out just fine. Okay. So now that we're a 
effectively down all of our ults and things, and we're down two levels. Um, the next objective, we really, you know, don't want to necessarily, like, hardcore commit and fight over. We don't have a building up there. Oh, uh, boy. I think we'll be okay here. Oh, we decided to gorge. The APOC landed. Wombo hits two. Can we kill him post-bunker? Okay, we didn't follow up. So Chromie's trying to get vision, which is why she gets, you know, hit first. I was trying to figure out how Chromie got hit first, but she's trying to put down a, you know, time trap or whatever to make sure that we have vision of this bottom section so we can do stuff. So Ace obviously hits the hook because it's a straight line and gorges. So I don't know if this is supposed to be a peeling gorge or if this is a, like, hey, this is the target we want, we want to kill, we want to fight. But, like, we're gorging. All right, W Star is not going to be able to help. We drop the hero, which is good, right? Like, we get him on the other side of the fort. That's what we wanted. But now that he's on the other side of the fort, right? We're having this weird, like, inv like they just all end on us. So they did their win condition, and we took this fight and our gorge down Riptire, right? If we're going to play all in, like, yes, we can get a displacement pick, but it's a lot dangerous, da more dangerous for us to do this without two of our ults, without the song of our people to keep people healthy, and without the Junkrat tire. So as we hit it, Bunker comes out. We hit two here, right? And as, as despite that we're hitting two here, like, W Star's looping over here on Pur Zerg. And it's probably because it's the only thing that Zerg, that, that he can reach, or she can reach, right? Like, it's, 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 it's not that they're trying to, like, do things out of sync, it's just that, like, we can't follow up on what's on the other side of the wall here, and we can't follow up on the pile because of how that engage happened. And so it just it just becomes awkward because now, you know, what should have hypothetically been a kill, we don't get because we, mo we moved out of the way, right? Like, we had, as much as we're weak here and we don't want to, like, die by holding Soul Shepherd here, but, like, Ace needed to body block here. I don't know if he felt comfortable or had enough health to do it, Right? Like, Diablo probably will have buttons up here shortly. Well, it says six seconds, so he wouldn't have E for a bit. But, like, you know, it's like trying to body block that bunker. If we're all in on killing this Blaze, we need to make sure he can't get out of the bunker and get to his team. So not only did he get out of the bunker, he turned around and ended up getting a kill. So, see, look at this. See, you guys can do it. The first displacement plus the second displacement, like, you can get kills. So it's like, it's like but we're not really, you know, on the same targets again. And so that whole thing is just chaotic and messy. We'll just quickly look. I don't think there's anything super special there that can be done. It's more that you had an opportunistic hook, and then after the hook, like, there's just not a lot we can do. Right? Like, he's definitely overextended in the tower here. You got the hook. We got the boom. Right? And then, like, he, they can't rotate this way because the turret's there and the healing item's there. So, like, it might be one of those things where you just have to give it up. Right? Like, you just got to stop. You can't chase it any further. As much as you want to, you just can't. Because your Chromie's still down here on this side of the world. So, and then, unfortunately, Diablo knows that he's got help. And so he flips you. And then the task wall makes makes sure that you die. So. Um, we're using that because we just want to have fun. I don't know. That junk red tire felt a little weird. I know you're trying to maybe stop them from pushing into you. But, like, that's... Uh, being an all-in composition, you fight when you have all your ults up, and so that feels weird using that when you don't need when you need it. So try and speed up a little bit here. I don't have a million times here, and I just saw that this game is 30 minutes long. So holy crap, you guys make a comeback somehow. Okay, so we're doing our best to min-max around the map. Um, the protector can be bait sometimes, which is maybe how you guys get ahead here. Um, because when they put two people in the protector, that means that whoever's next to the protector can be dove or can be killed. And so especially with your composition, whether it be booping them or gorging them, you might be able to get kills. It's one of the best times to fight them is when they actually put two people in the protector. You guys are down three levels. Like, you guys honestly need a Hail Mary, or you need the, like, you know, s slow this game down incredibly. Because your late game talents, um, can be game winning. 
right? Like, Gaslow getting to 20s is outrageous, you know. Uh, Malf gets all of his big healing talents later on at 16. Chromie, um, having double loop can make a big difference, or CDR. Stitches gets some crazy um, healing and um, healing reduction talents, or Hungry Hungry late game 20s. Um, their 20s might arguably be a little bit better just because of the Zuljan scaling, and uh, but and the Tassadar wall is kind of stupid. But you definitely want to slow this game down. So let's see if you guys get an opportunity for a hook here. I think that's my guess is what's going to happen. I love this. See, you guys are working together. This is great. Right? So we're going to be looking for a trap through that hook. And we got our hook. We got our gorge. And that's just a dead Zuljan. There's absolutely nothing they can do. Yep, Zuljan's just going to try and get as many stacks as he can. See? They were down three levels and got a kill. And that was enough to push them off. They didn't secure the building, and now they're running away. So, well done. You finally got your isolation in your pick, and you punish them from overextending. A little messy as far as everybody working together on the same loop, but we did work together and get that loop. So we're slowing the game down now. We're trying our best to, you know, catch up on levels, stay healthy, and figure out what we can do here. Uh, we're not 16s yet. This is great vision control. So it's funny. You guys did this exact same thing earlier, except for you forced the boss. Compared to this time, like whether it be because you're down talents or whatever, you're watching the healing camp. Not the boss, sorry. And now that you're watching the healing camp, you can punish them. This is what you've got. You've got zone control. You have tools. You have stuff to poke, right? I don't know if you can kill Diablo, right? Like just because he's a tanky boy, um, looks like he has full souls. So, you know, it's like... But you force them to engage. It looks like we're actually might get a kill here. Oh, I was close. Maybe a, se a second attempt took. Oh, Diablo overstayed. Yep. Oh, no. I guess it's going to work out. <sighs> Goodness gracious, the chaos. Okay, we finally got him. <laughs> you see what I mean by if you have a hook... You want burst damage because you had to land four hooks <laughs> and Diablo had to overextend to get a kill. So being behind and trading kills is always a plus for the team that's behind. And once again, you stop them from doing the healing item. Um, can you do the healing item? I don't think so. It's a good idea. Good attempt. So, all right. So again, we are looking to even up the game and get ahead as we can. Um, there, there it is. Let's see it. Oh. Yes! Oh, so close. Oh, the trap still landed. And the boop. We still... Okay, hey, bunker got blown. We walk away. Oh. Yeah, this is hard. Like, we don't... Like I said, I'm like, we definitely are going all in. But, like, we didn't gorge. That's probably the main difference. If you're going to run this type of thing again, is that, like, you need to make sure that the, that the burst that's coming from the rip tire happens off of a gorge. So, it's a good idea. Like, you guys are doing the right things to try and find picks. Just your damage structure is a little off. Alright, let's speed it up again. They get a pick there because Diablo things. Yep. Not gonna break that down. We're overextended and Diablo got a pick. So Loop punishes Blaze's overextension there since he has no bunker this time. Looks like that slows down the game again. Um, they're trying to be aggressive. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, we're coming back. 18s versus 20s. Again, we our turret's probably the next thing where they're contesting. You just saw that they were there. Good idea. Right? Like, it's a little bit hard to get kills at this point. They're going to take all the toys. Um, 18 versus 20, you really want to make sure you get your silk back up. I, you might be able to trade buildings top, right? Like, they're probably going to be split, whatever they're doing. You see at least one bottom, so you guys are taking the top. Good job. Um... I don't really like that Stitches is the main person clearing, because that Stitches is kind of your your scary. Right? Okay, so we traded. So this is actually potentially a really good time to fight. So they they have someone on the point still. They just finished capturing the thing. And they're running into your guys' poke. Right? They want to all in. And so if you can poke them down and survive your all in and then get a hook, or get a hook and isolate them, like, you can get some good kills here. And then again, if they get in the protector, they're going to reduce their numbers of people. So, good attempt. Right? Maybe you had some vision there, but that's okay. Good attempt. So they at least have, they have the healer. Nope. 
Right wing got out. Okay, Diablo's in. And they only put one in. So that's pretty smart of them. They only put one person in. So that means that, you know, they have a little bit more bodies, right? That's why you see Blaze is stepping up over here. They have a little bit more bodies this time and then putting both of them in the protector. So this building is effectively gone. Um, we just looped on the other side there. So, okay. Are we looking for a kill? There's a bunker. Almost got him. Okay. We finally hit 20s. Uh, like I said, I don't think our 20s are going to be game-changing. The Riptire CDR one can be fun. Then you've got Riptire up again here shortly. So, hey, there's a long-range hook. Uh, we gorge the Diablo. Okay. Punish that. He's literally on an island by himself. Yep, he's going to blow all of his buttons. He's CC'd forever. They even get... What? How did the... Did they just walk into, like, a wombo combo? Like, what? how did the other two die? Alright, let me watch the gas, though. Like, their team legitimately should be like, Peace out, Diablo, you got souls. See you next res. Like, I have no idea what what they're doing up here. Like, uh, diving in to try and save the Diablo is mind-boggling to me. And then little Barista, like, blinks away, right? I don't, peace, I'm out. I don't want to be near the Diablo. But blinks away into the Gazla Wombo combo. Oh, my gosh. It's so painful. Oh, man. This is 100% one of those things where, like, if you don't think you can core... Like, you shouldn't be fighting. Like, you got your building. You're up two levels. Just walk away. So. All right. Well, good punish. Um, you might be able to get a hook here or something. Can you loop? You got dismounted. Ooh, no. Well, that hit. Yay, there's the loop. Let's work together, team. It's a good slow. <sighs> Feel free, Ace, if you, as the tank, to body block first. Because Blaze's only way out is for him to walk around you, right? So if you can st just continue to stay in line with him so he can't E, you'll be able to get that kill there. All right, well, we got some kills. We're up. Let's try and get some structures. Well done. We can try and even this game up. We're so we honestly need another pick. We're so far behind. We need more picks. Uh, taking their guns is good. We just even up the buildings as much as we can. I like this idea, right? Being sneaky, looking for a pick. We've got traps playing for the pick. They're now five versus five, right? And that's not what we want as a pick team. A pick comp doesn't want five versus fives. A pick comp wants isolated kills, wants to get people by themselves for that. Um, is this to help secure the building and try and get CDR? I guess. Uh-oh. I think this guy just, just trolled. Like, yes, you've got a good APOC here, but you just ran in all by yourself. Oh. Maybe I'm wrong. No. Nope. Okay. I, I would have never engaged there. That was so deep. And, the, you know, you can see they're out of sync now. They're chasing so hard to get those kills, and now you're starting to wind them down, wear them down with your abilities. That's a good hook attempt. We probably don't have a kill there. Nope. But you did get Tazdingo popped. So, okay. So once again, our next fight, we can poke and win and try and do some good things with. You see that they're showing... Okay. So because we poked them low, they don't want to be on this point yet. Oh, they went and took the objective. That's fine. Okay, this is going to be a critical fight. Um, this is this is unfortunately in their favor. Oh! Well, they almost gave you a pick. So we're getting CDRs on that. Gazlo's playing for his life. Gazlo's going to live. This No, Tazdingo, you can kill Zerg. Oh, just barely. Over now, they're over chasing to try and protect. We have our CDR up again. You know, you get some CDR on that hit. Ooh, they give you a bonus CDR on that hit. Even better. Um, obviously, we're losing core here, but that's kind of the risk, the calculated risk you have to take. Right? Like, your only chance to win is if you get kills with a pick. So, 
run towards the protector. If you're gonna die, as funny as it sounds, try and get in the protector. Right? You'll save your health pool. I know it's not easy to panic and do that, but like, try and get in the protector. Um, we don't have half of our damage structure now. Um, we just loop. <sighs> we kind of did that out of order, right? With the hook and the loop. So, um, the Punisher doesn't bring, or the, well, so the mech doesn't bring that much damage. I might just skip through this. I think you get like one or two buildings, and you're not going to be able to do anything with it. Yeah, it was an attempt. Oh, okay. Let's just do like, now we gorged, right? And we're trying to displace, but we don't have any damage. It's interesting. Blaze actually tried to help, and then Blaze almost died for it. So, like, the Gazlo bombs are super annoying. I'm glad that we're pushing and supporting this. Yep, yep, yep. Can we finish the building? It's going to be close. They're now five, and we're not. Um, loop attempt didn't happen. Yeah, we have to back. Start going to start backing up. Okay. We've kept, we've literally just slowed down the game. So, again, we're at five versus five. And we're pretty much all done. Okay, no, we shouldn't re-engage in the mech here. It's 23% health and 28 time. Right? We got what we could. We're again at the 5 versus 5 stage. We can't do anything as 5. Yes, we can all in with our Gazlo, but like in our Junkrat. But like for them to do that, that means they have to be on top of us. So we're punishing them clumping. The rest of our team wants to poke and isolate and pull them away from their team. So running at them and giving them the 5 versus 5 they want is probably not ideal. So Like I said, the bomb hits 2. Is that enough? Hey, you got one off of it. Can we do anything now? We gotta get this middle building. They're down 1. Again, we sieging, but we want to pick. We're sieging, but we want to pick. Okay. 40 seconds. Our team cannot core. Right? So what can we do that gets us the most bang for the buck in the next 40 seconds? Probably taking a gun, looking for another pick attempt. Not this camp. Like, sure, the camp pushes, but like... I don't know. I see your idea. Like, you're trying to even up the map because you're behind on that side of the map. But, like, the gun in the turret does more damage, can help you push and siege, and is something that they might actually want to fight for. They don't care about this camp. They have a keep in the way. They care about this gun because they're going to need it for their next team fight. Like, Volsky is all about controlling the toys. They give so much XP and so much stuff. So, 10 seconds... Hey, we got to keep. And we're out. They're back to 5v5, full strength. We're all done. Goodness gracious, this is a nail-biter. Um, they just scouted you on this. This is really dangerous now. You do have a boop, so you should be able to get out if they engage. Okay, looks like you guys got it safely. Okay, you know that they're coming for you here. They've got all the vision in the world. You see them coming. We get out. Oh, no! Poor junk! Oh my gosh, the black hole lands and hits two. The bunker, gorge. Oh, it's hungry, hungry. Oh my gosh, you hit it. That's two, that's three. Holy crap. You got a kill here on Zerg too. Focus fire. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Go, tire, go. Yeah, I was like, you're going to have to guess. You have no idea where he is. So, I'm guessing you guys just called core here. With them being too dead. And you're running at the core. Um, again, your team isn't really strong at core. Like, you're strong at getting picks. So this is going to be a, a pretty challenging. Unless you get another kill. Which, you got another kill. So, if you can stay healthy... Oh, no! Oh my gosh. Do you guys get this? It's tested our bright wing. There you go. Now you get it. Hey, that was a great gorge. You just canceled the TP. You win. Holy mackerel. What on earth was this game? Oh, no. Do you not finish here? 
Oh my gosh, we're too low. No way. Oh, we inner synergy there, guys. Oh no, you had it. Oh my gosh. Heartbreaker. Okay. That's all I got time for. That was absolutely chaotic. I don't know if you guys can win there. Even if everybody threw their life on the core, you just don't do core damage. Right? Like, your strength isn't getting picks. You got your staggered picks. You got your staggered kills. Like, we just aren't healthy enough. And, like, mouth eventually fell. Um, yeah. That's really sad. Okay. We'll quickly look at talents. Um, I guess you went wave clear bot. This is why you took all of those talents. Um, meat hook, hungry, hungry. Hungry, hungry is cute. I like the idea for the all-in wombo combo, especially with the tire and potentially double loop and stuff and the gazlo bomb. Um, gazlo is perfect. E builds fine. Double shot lasers, roots, mana. You have two heroes on your team that don't that can't use mana. Yeah, this is bad. Two heroes on your team can't even use this talent. Like, if you have, like, a Jaina or something, I understand taking this, but I don't know who you're giving mana to that would need this. I would definitely take a different talent there. Yeah, you've got regrowth replies to yourself. Imagine if you had regrowth replies to yourself right here. Right? You'd be, you would be above 20% health when the blaze gets to you. For sure. Slows. Do you are you do you need the slows? Oh no, it's reading the wrong talent. But still. Um you didn't take the cleanse. So I don't know if maybe you're uncomfortable. Um I don't know if you feel uncomfortable taking the cleanse, but I 100% think you need the cleanse here. Yeah. Just I would say if you're going to take Malf, you need to make sure you have a cleanse for your team. They're all inning a pocking on top of you, and you aren't able to cleanse the person that. It's like it's a team wide cleanse. Everyone that has a regrowth can get cleansed. I would definitely take cleanse there, and if you're not taking cleanse, take tenacious roots. So that way, every time you get silenced, you get your e back up. I don't think you need to extend the regrowths of your team. You're not a triple bruiser where you need so many regrowths. Regrowths. Trank's good. Um, move speed. Move speed. Move speed. Move speed. The only way Malf dies is if you get to Malf. Take the move speed. You run faster than a mount if you have everyone on your team has a move speed or has a Q on them. And then that's fine. I'm okay with you doing that. Multiple heals mean multiple things. I'm also okay with Ysera's Gift. It's the easy mode one. But this one obviously is good because you can get bigger hits, more big heals off your Ws. And then, yeah, the armor on 20 is the right talent. That's pretty much the only one you go once you have that. Uh, junk things. All traps is fine. Um... I don't know if I like Burst Fire. I see you're trying to take it to maybe get additional kills. Um, because, like, obviously you want to get a kill, but it also makes it harder to play Junk. So, if you're used to that talent, fine. But I think the other two tend to get more value. Like, changing your kit to Burst like that makes you kind of uh, awkward to play at times when you don't have your Qs available. And then, yeah, all the traps. Crummy stuff, multiple. That's correct. Loop. Yeah. Um, yeah, you went Q here, so you're going Q's here. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I really like the Pierce into their team, actually. Just because both Diablo and Bunker Blaze want to be standing there, so being on the Pierce of those is pretty good. So, yeah. I, I'm not going to blame it on Mouth, but I 100% believe you guys would have been healthy enough to end here if we had, if we had this changed. Because Mouth doesn't die, and then you guys are healthy enough to continue pushing in and going for core. So, lots of other stuff was wrong this game. <laughs> but but definitely, like, that, that mouth self-heal and the mouth speed is so huge for his kit. So, all right. More than time than I expected to give, but you gave me a 30-minute replay. So, um, feel free, DM me, message me if you have questions. This was Rock. Have a good evening. Rock out.